Welcome back everyone and this is again another video about ECS and we're going to continue building our system a little further. Today we're going to start handling more advanced components and systems and how to load them. Um, so there, we're going to build two new component systems and one's called behavior which is just logic. All it is is just an update function. So as you can see this is what the data looks like. It's just update. So what behavior is, so instead of building a system for every little component, I have a component and a system designed for the fact that if this component exists, it executes some kind of code. So that's all it does. So if I need to create like just a single bit of logic for just one entity, and it's not something that's going to run on multiple ent entities, um, this, is the op this is the component I'm going to use. Um, I can this component can extend later on where it can dynamically download JS files and load in uh, update functions, things like that. So this way I'm not coding them directly. So this behavior functionality can be extended much further down. But for now, I'm just going to add a function to it when I need it and then call it a day. But like I said, this behavior function will can extend further down the line. But like again, it's just a bit of logic just for a specific entity only. And the system that runs this component is very simple. It gets the list of what has a book, and if it's active, and if it has, like it's not null, just run the update. That's it. That, that that's that's the whole system. <laughs> that's not. There's not nothing much to behavior. Um, now we have a little bit more complicated. Uh, one, we're going to create dynamic VAO. Now, in, in Funga, we always had a way to debug our data. We were able to um, draw lines, draw cubes, and draw points in 3D space. And I would call them like debug line, debug point, whatever. And we had three objects that did that, <clears throat> that handled that stuff. Now, all those three objects now got replaced by a single component, a couple of functions, and a system. Um, so... And it's in and it's structured and structured differently. So this is kind of like an add-on to our render component. So our render component, our render component. Where is our render component? Uh, it's called drawable now. Has a VAO, so it key, holds a reference to a VAO. Dynamic VAO would actually actually generate a VAO and then dump it into the the, the drawable component. So it it's. Um, Components should ha sometimes can have a require uh, like a like a requirement, and it's something I might build down the line in the future. Where when I add this component, it has to check to see if the entity has a drawable, and if it doesn't have a drawable, it will create it for you because it's a it's a dependency, not not a requirement, but a dependency. So dynamic VO has a dependency for drawable. Um, so, and there's there's a private function, which creates the dynamic uh, VEO for us. And we've done this in the past so many times. It's just, it's an empty VEO. And then, um, like I said, it, it modifies the dynamic VEO, uh, uh, um, the drawable VEO. It saves it into there. And then we create, use our dynamic buffer function to make it um, our vertices, uh, the vertice buffer uh, dynamic. So this way we can modify the, dy dy uh, the buffer dynamically and then upload to the GPU. So it's not a static mesh, it's a dynamic mesh. So the mesh can change as any way we want. So that's our init function. But we also have some static init functions. So like, because like I said before, I would have to have a, a, like a dynamic renderable, and then that dynamic renderable will extend. And like I said, we end up having all this hierarchy of um, inheritance. This is just a function. This is functional programming. So I'm, instead of doing inheritance, I say, well, basically, I have this component, and I have that component. Um, here's a function, and I want to initialize it. So this this it calls the the hidden private function that sets up the VAO. Then um, the only extra thing this thing does is addition. So this is kind of like inheritance, but in a functional form. Like like I keep saying, it's in functional program, it's kind of like function calling function. So this init init point, and this is just plain old init. This init's the VAO. This init's the VAO plus some extra things related to points. So the only difference is I want the draw mode to be point. And in it line is the same thing. And now remember in previous I also had a draw box. But draw box actually was just lines that I just drew a box. So this way I can just draw, I just have two init functions. One for point and one for line. 
And then here I have more, again, more static functions. Like I said, this is functional programming. I pass in the entity, and it knows to go into that verts and push data to it. And then, I, again, I set it as modified. So I've got to keep track of modifications. And it returns back a dynamic VAO. So this way I can chain it. So I can say raw point, raw point, raw point as much as I want. And vec point is the same thing. It just uses a vector. Um, and then we have lines. And like I said, remember I said that I had a box object that was a line. So I just have raw box. I just copy that functionality right over and it's a function. And it modifies is modified. So this is more of a dynamic, uh, this is more uh, more of a complicated structure because now it has dependencies, it modifies data and everything else. And uh, our dynamic VEO system, so there's a system that helps run this. Um, again, it checks to see if it's active, it checks if it's modified. If it's been modified, it pushes all the data to the GPU and... Um, sets the modified back to false, and then updates the VEO element count. So this way, um, if the element count equals zero, it won't render. So we have to make sure how many, how many vertices do we have to, for rendering, and that's where it updates. So this function actually updates all the data, yet again, for final rendering. So dynamic VEO system should run uh, at some point before the transform and before um, rendering. So it has a different priority, it has a higher priority. So those are new things. Now, I want to load them up dynamically. So I create new functions called use behavior and use dynamic VAO. So if I go back to apps and go down here, I have new optional things. And again, it's kind of like, it, like I said, it just loads the behaviors and it loads the the component systems and it just adds it to it and it has a priority by default so I can actually change the priority at this level if I want but there's also a default priority which is 20 and 21 so me to me I want behaviors to happen before dynamic because the dy behaviors might actually modify the dynamic stuff so again that's it's you have to keep track of what what's priority um, the pri all the priorities and I might have changed the priority sizes again or no, I didn't. I still kept 120, uh, 200. And, so I'm, I'm spacing out the priority values so, so I have more room to kind of stick things in between the, the, main, the main rendering systems. And like I said, this is, and, you know, in our components, calls the component function so it automatically registers. So it, so everything's kind of automatic. You, you download the JS files, they automatically, the components automatically register. And then the systems, you can write some quick code to add the system to your main um, ECS object and have the priority by default. So it actually makes this really neat dynamic system. And uh, if you've ever done um, ASP, ASP.NET Core and you, you build up your web server, it kind of works this way too. It has like a use function. And so you can add um, optional functionality to your pipeline of the web server when you're building it. So I kind of built it under the same ideas. I'm using the word use. So, and, and you know, that's that's the, you know, like, this kind of look really cool because everything's kind of just dynamic, uh, you know, like, uh, or uh, appendages, not appendages, assemblages actually download components themselves manually too and everything else. So everything becomes very automatic. Like if I need something, it automatically go, goes gets it. And everything's asynchronous and hopefully uh, by using promises, everything will load up uh, before you, you, you actually start your, your, um, your init function. So right here, like I'm saying, okay, when I'm done loading all my resources and if my resources load successfully, download um, this. If that's successful, run this if that's successful load my scene and when that when that's successful run this now if you're very sure this is going to work very well like all these three objects if you want you can just comment these out so if you don't want to run them sequentially you want to run them in parallel you can just do this say promise all and just pass in and just call it the function in an array just create an array and have these each element. So this is an, an array of promises, and it says this will then, the next would only happen if all three of these things run successfully, if I remember correctly, or, or when all of them are done. I, don't, uh, I can't remember how promises work right now at the moment, um, but one or the other. If these are all successful, it would then run the next then, else it runs the catch. So 
correct me if I'm wrong, but like I said, I'm not sure. Like if one fails, I don't know if it just completely ignores the next then. Or as long as it, they're all complete, it runs. I can't remember which, which way it works. Um, I forget. Um, and then and that's it. So we can load these all three in parallel at the same time instead of doing them sequentially. Either way will work. So if I'm going to save, that's good. So if I go here, so we have our system. You, as you can see, everything is being loaded in dynamically or for the most part dynamically. Transform system, render system. Now our dynamic VO system sets at priority one. Uh, we have behavior added, and then we have a pre behavior system. All oh, everything just gets just loaded in, just by pass, just saying use this, use that, use this. Um, ideally, maybe you don't want to do that into the app. Put everything in app. Um, maybe I just didn't. I just because these are stuff I'm going to reuse a lot, so that's why I added it as an app function. But sometimes you may maybe just make an import. And call it a day, and that import automatically does, or, or you know, you do an import and then you just add it into your then list that way if you want. Um, so you're not building everything into app, so you can make things more dynamic. But like I said, anything that's like I said, I'm going to use behaviors quite quite often, and this is a dynamic video is how I use voxels, and it's also how I use all my debugging um, functionality. So. I build it into app because it's something I'm going to use very often. So that's why it's the way it, it's, it, it is where it is. Um, so, and I'm also importing um, dynamic VO component because that component also contains all my static functions. So, so I need to import it. And I just gave it a short name so I can write my code smaller. So in that smaller alias. So if I want to do my points before I would just initialize points and, um, and what, uh, yeah, I just initiate points and then I just start adding points to it. Then I had say update. Uh, I don't have to do that any, anymore. Right now, I create an entity. And um, this entity uses the, the draw entity. So it uses the assemblage draw. So, like I said, it's, just, it's a shortcut, it's just a function that does it. Um, I give it a name D point and I say this is the material I want, I want to use. Um, then I use the dynamic VAO object because it has all the st static functionality. And I say initiate initially an initialize point. So basically, it takes that entity and then updates all the data in the components that need that's needed for my dynamic points system to work. And then from there, I just pass in e points the actual entity and just say here's the points I want. So if I click save and refresh, I now have points. Done deal. So this is like another way of building dynamically building. Um, pieces. This is like this. That's why I said this is more of advanced component building. You know, it's like I'm building an entity and then passing that entity into another function. That function then changes the components or adds components. It does more to it um, for you automatically. Um, and again, I can do the same thing uh, for lines. I create. I create another entity. Call it D line. Like again, again, it only has um, the render. It has the draw and the transform component. So the v, this VO actually adds, um, add by name, it actually adds uh, the dynamic VO component to, the, uh, to your entity. So it's automatic. So it, it adds the component and it initializes all the data for you. It, it kind of just gets that entity all set up and ready to go. So instead of creating a, a class that does that for you you just create functions and and you just, and you just dump them into each other like this is how i managed to approach it you can do approach it any other way but i like writing one line of code some people don't like that some people like to have different so i can have a function called entity e line uh and then i could call this by dumping that in afterwards you know so so ideally you can also do it this way and just call the function after the fact um but I built, I built uh, this function purposely, the init function purposely, to return back the entity that you sent in. So it becomes kind of like function call chainable. So like I said, it's it's just an, an API style I'm kind of developing for this functional programming uh, system I'm doing. And since I have this set up, I can start I can start putting vert building vertices and building dynamic meshes. And uh, and there you go. Now I have cube, and I have that orange line in the middle. 
And the last thing, once I have E line, let's say I want to add behavior to it. So I have a behavior already loaded up in the system. So I can say, well, here's the entity. Can we add a new behavior to it? And it, like I said, it only has an update function. So I call the update function. And all it does is this entity, because that component, every component has a reference to its entity. So this, that entity, com, transform, and just changes its rotation. And then um, the behavior system will find all entities that have a behavior component and will execute the update function. So if I click, click for save, there we go. Um, the E line object is has its rotation being modified um, every frame. So as you can see, I can quickly, very easily build new pieces and just a uh, new, um, uh, for lack of a better word, new game objects dynamically. You know, like like I said, I have an entity, I. I modify it with, with components. I pass in information to that component. Then again, I added more components to it dynamically. That gives it more functionality. And this is all without inheritance. This is all just um, basically functional programming and just separating data and logic. Um, and overall, I, th as the system is being progressed, it to me seems like this is a really nice way of building games, um, exp especially for, uh, not necessarily a nice way of building games. It's a nice way of prototyping. It, it really, I really feels like this makes thing prototyping so much easier. Um, and since Fungi is really a prototyping, uh, it's, a, it's a prototype gaming engine that I want to do. It's basically a, a prototype. It's a learning system to learn how to do how to build a game system and everything else this really just adds to it because it makes it so much easier to just like like i can i can create a new component and then automatically attach to it build a system if i need to attach that and off it goes it's running i don't need to do anything else so this ecs system actually works pretty well so i'll end this here and um, there's only one more video or two more videos really uh, i have one more video to record today will be dealing with hierarchy so how do we deal with hierarchy um using uh without using inheritance so see you guys in the next video uh please like and subscribe and uh see you guys